just kind of your thoughts on, on the matchup. You get UNLV, um, and then if you win that, obviously a really good San Diego team. Kind of a tough draw, but I think one that maybe uh, be a good challenge for your team. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, this time of year, everybody's good and, and has made it this far. UNLV, um, you know, is definitely a, a tough team and they've had an incredible year um, as their record shows. Um, so, yeah, at this point of year, we're just going to have to, you know, play our match and, um, you know, get scouting right away and see how we can, um, you know, take the other team maybe out of system and but a really, really good UNLV team and um, you know, us as coaches, we always have to prepare for everybody. Um, but as you know, the team and talking to the team, you know, we're definitely not really talking anything um, past Thursday afternoon. What kind of stands out to you about UNLV when you kind of look at them and, and kind of see what they do? Yeah, you know, I, they have a great setter um, in Jenna Gabriel and, um, you know, a um, outside hitters that can kind of do everything. And, you know, um, I think a tough serving team as well. So, um, yeah, you know, it's always hard when you haven't seen a team before you're going into, um, a new situation. It kind of takes you back to, you know, first week in a preseason where you almost have to focus a little bit on yourself and then maybe make some more in-game adjustments, um, as you go along. The uh, the Pac-12, some of the, the awards came out today, and you get two players on them, the first team with Magda and Pia, and then Katie and Lara also getting uh, honorable mention. Just kind of talk about what they mean to the team and then for them to get those honors. Yeah, I mean, those four especially um, have done an incredible job this year, um, you know, and it shows we, we really have a, a balanced offense, and so I think sometimes that hurts um, our players, you know, uh, kills per set, things like that. Um, and I was a little bit surprised, actually, that Laura, with her stats, didn't make the first team. Um, you know, maybe that's a little bit of Pia's um, name recognition and, and nothing against Pia, but Laura's stats were, um, you know, our, the highest on our team as far as outside hitters um, goes. And um, so I'm not sure if coaches just really weren't looking at uh, stats as much this year compared to some of the other players that were on that first team. But um you know, it is what it is, a little chip on our shoulder once again. Um, and, you know, everybody's playing well right now, those four especially. So we'll just see if we can keep that going into this weekend. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the tournament. Thanks, Jamie. Um, Ryan or Sam, do you guys have any questions? Oh, I see Sam's hands up. All right, Coach, congrats on another tournament bid. Thanks, Sam. Um, so I guess what is, what's, uh, the focus, I mean, you kind of spoke to it kind of focusing on yourself, but I guess, how does it, what's the main difference between facing an out-of-conference opponent that you've with such short notice versus facing a conference opponent, maybe the second time around? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely different. You know, you only have a couple of days to prepare. Um, you know, you got to go through and watch a lot of film. I know, you know, as soon as that, um, selection show happens, we're, um, you know, to the office, downloading film, um, getting scouting reports going, um, you know, trying to find out as much information as you can about a team. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we have to play our match as well. And so, you know, the things we normally focus on, um, serve and pass, getting our block going, which has definitely come um, along nicely, um, you know, the second half of the season, um, you know, and, and focusing out on what we can do offensively as well. And how have your players been dealing with kind of the anxiety and pressure of the tournament? Um, you know, I, I don't know that they feel any pressure right now. Once, um, once we're here, uh, the pressure typically comes in the Pac-12 um, day in and day out. You, you never, you know, have an easy match. Um, and it's just like getting through the grind of the Pac-12, I think, is really where the pressure comes. Um you know, this right now is just focusing one match at a time. Um, you know, so I don't see them with that pressure. I think, um, you know, they've gone to the tournament, especially our seniors now, you know, four in a row for them, seven in a row overall. So um, I think that experience is helpful, actually. Awesome. And with this being, I believe, your 13th total tournament, um, has you how have you seen your approach to travel, to just preparation? How, how have you seen that change? Um, 
Yeah, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I don't want to say now it's um, kind of old hat and we're we're expecting it a little bit, but um, yeah, it kind of it kind of is. And um, you know, we just got done with practice, stepped off the floor right now. They're um, you know showering, get getting ready to go, and um, yeah, we unfortunately have to bust to Spokane and, and fly out of there. Um, so kind of a long day of travel um, to get us there for tomorrow. Um, to practice, you know, around noon and then play the early match on Thursday. But um, it is what it is. And, um, you know, we'll take it in stride and, um, you know, enjoy the moment as well. Guys, do you have any best practices or go-to playlists or books for the travel? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really the only time that I watch, you know, Netflix or something like that. So, um yeah, it, it's typically whatever I had downloaded from the last trip that's still on there because I, I never, you know, watch any of that while I'm here at home in Pullman. So, um, but this trip, it's probably going to be some film. So um, not as exciting as you think. For sure. Yeah. And how, how do you help your players navigate travel? Well, we're just, we are so used to traveling, um, mm -hmm. especially this year. We have, um you know, just been road warriors. Um, we spend a lot of time um, in airports and on airplanes. Um, so they're just pretty used to it. Um, yeah, they all have their, um, you know, shows and, and their playlists and stuff like that they're watching. I'm sure they're doing homework too at some point in time. But um, yeah, I think we're just really used to it. So it's it's not a whole lot different. I, I am happy we're just going to San Diego. And I say we're just going to San Diego like it's, you know, next door. But um, at least it's not in a different time zone. So that's good. Yep. Thanks, thank questions. you, Coach. Great luck. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. thanks for the question. Sorry to cut it short, but um, Ryan, you do have your hand up. Um, I will let you get just a couple of questions in, but Coach Greeny does have to get off to a send off here um, at 145. So go ahead and fire off with uh, whatever questions you have for Coach Greeny. All right, can you guys hear me all right? Yep. Yes. Perfect. Okay, cool. So thanks so much for joining us, Coach. Is there ever really a concern knowing that within the transfer portal that star players can use the portal whenever and maybe leave at any given time to potentially find greener pastures? Um, yeah, in a normal year, yes. Um, and, and this year, I don't think so, because since they all announced they were coming back. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, we were fortunate enough to get Laura, um, and she's been a huge impact for us um, this year. So, um, you know, we'll probably hit the transfer portal again um, and try and get another outside hitter at least, um, if not um, one more hitter as well. Absolutely. How would you say the portal has maybe helped or hurt volleyball in terms of playing at a high level? Um, yeah, it's definitely, it used to be a sport where people didn't transfer hardly at all. Um, and now you're seeing that much more. Um, I think, I think it's, it's difficult, um, uh, especially, you know, top teams to um, kind of stay at the top. Um, I think there's a lot more parity now um, with the transfer portal. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not fun when you um, lose a player to the transfer portal, but it's usually more fun when you get one in. Awesome. And what are some of the difficulties maybe as a coach in trying to facilitate a positive team environment, knowing that some of those players could just jump ship whenever? Yeah, we really haven't wavered in the way that we run our program. Um, so we're not going to change it um, to cater to some player that maybe doesn't want to uh, buy into that. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, um, our starters, especially right now, are bought into this program. They want to be here. Um, they want to go win a national championship for Washington State. And so that's what we're trying to do every day.